Hello, everybody. Welcome to tonight's broadcast of RTC Board TV. We have the Argus Lady Dragons hosting the Culver Academy Lady Eagles. And we're just jumping straight into the lineups now. As we have for the Eagles, we have Deanna Craig, Leah Markell, Mallory McGee, Taylor Bowen, and Madison Miller. And now for the Dragons, it's Sydney Shepard, Emma Dunlap. Next one is Maddie Vanderweel. After that is number 34, Sophie Bullenbacher. And then after her is number 40, Lizzie Edmonds. So tonight it is me, Dylan Kendig, back on the mic after last night with someone you've seen before or you've heard from before, Joe Kendig. He was here for one of the boys' games uh, against Bremen, I think it was, correct? That is correct. All right, well, how does it feel to be back on the mic? Feels good. Feels good? Feels right. really good. All right, so tonight I will be covering Sir here, the Sir, nicknamed Joe, will be here doing stats, and then Luke Schaefer is on the camera. And so we're just going to jump straight into tip-off. We started it a little later. We started at lineups. But last night, the Dragons faced the Rochester Zebras, which was a fairly close game. It was really close to the very end, which I heard predictions. It was predicted not to be even close. And that, I'm, like, coming into this game, they should definitely not be hanging their heads after last night for how well they played against such a good team who beat Judson, who we lost to. Agreed. They played it close to the end, came up short. And there's a quick foul. Looks like it's going to be on the floor. That one's going to be on Emma Dunlap. But yeah, the Dragons still looking for their first win. 0-7 now. But they're coming in tonight feeling confident after playing very well against Rochester last night. Hopefully they can finally get that first W in the column for them. Dragons starting how they did last night. Early pressure, there's a quick shot outside, no good. This one's dumped inside, and that one's out of bounds. And the academy will have the ball under the basket. Corner three, that one hits nothing. And Vanderbilt comes away with the rebound, going quickly the other way. Slows it down, and it looks like the fast break's gonna end quickly. Double team by Culver. Shepard Shepherd outside, that Got one's it. good. Dragons quick lead, that's three to nothing. Last night, there was not a lot of quick scoring. It was zero to zero still with Three minutes blown by, and that one was quick. That one was quicker, and the travel on Culver now. The Dragons will move the other way. Man defense here with the Academy. Kicks out the good pass to the corner. Shepard, another three. That one's off. Edmonds, Edmonds, the rebound, the gets rebound, it back, gets puts it, it back go. in. Yeah, like me and Phil were talking about last night, Lizzie Edmonds, always relentless on that offensive glass, always looking to fight for it, put it back up. She's definitely a, a big presence down low. Definitely. Outside, contested by Dunlap, but that one's good. McGee with two. It's Vanderbilt, kick to the corner. Shepard won't have a shot there. Loses it, keeps it in bounds. Vanderbilt surveying the floor, finds Edmonds inside. Top of the key, three for Dunlap, off the mark. That one's brought in by Bowen. It's 
Shepard's first foul. And that'll be a foul on Shepard. Team second. Finds a corner, open, contest by Dunlap there, but that one's off left. And the Dragons will have the ball. And you know, it is more fun to hear the fans with the smaller crowd because when they're saying something after a call, then you can hear, like, you can definitely pick out which one's which and who's saying what. Edmonds drive to the left side, finds nothing. Vanderweel dumps inside to Edmonds. That one's good. Seven to two, Argus lead. It's four points now for Lizzie. Yeah. And tries to save it, tries to keep her feet in, but couldn't find the footing and falls. Ball goes out of bounds, Argus ball. That one almost lost by Bollenbacher. Brandy will drive into the middle, kicks out to Dunlap. She drives baseline, nothing there. Inside Edmonds, she'll put it up off the glass. That one rims out. Bowen with another rebound. I think she's gonna be testing Lizzie inside on those rebounds, both physical. Agreed. And it looks like there's gonna be an over the back. That one's on number 44, Madison Miller. And we've already got a timeout. Culver calls timeout. Well, yeah, the Dragons still looking for their first win tonight. How do you think they come into this game knowing that they played well last night but still couldn't come up with the win? How do you think they come into this one? Guns a-blazing. Guns a-blazing. We like seeing you that. You can't, can't hang your head down from last night. They played very well. Use that momentum, come out, and just... Stick it to them early and. Which so far they've done. They have a five yep. point lead early. Just keep that momentum going all the way through to the last moments. All right, and so Dragon's ball out of the timeout. Stumlap brings it up the floor. Finds Shepard. She'll go to the top of the key for Bollenbacher. Stumlap fakes, drives baseline. That one stolen ball. by Bowen. Good ball movement, but that hole just closed a little too quickly to get that pass through. Do you think fatigue comes into effect here after playing last night for the Dragons? Probably won't set in until the second half. I imagine there's a lot of adrenaline right now Yeah. with the beginning of the game, mm -hmm. but uh, hopefully they can see through quarters three and four. Yeah, and these back-to-back -back games, these are always, I wouldn't say always difficult, but they're never necessarily easy because once again, fatigue sets in that second half. You start to feel a lot more then, and then not having a practice to prepare for that next game. That, that never helps. As much as some players think it doesn't help, it definitely does. Oh, and we were supposed to shout out Coach Drew Mawson, I forgot too at the beginning of the broadcast, he said he wanted a minimum of 35 shout outs. I don't think we're gonna be able to get that many in. Well, we got, two, got We two. got one, we got well, one now. Well, now we got two. Oh, two? Yeah, you said Coach Drew twice and there's three. Oh. Steal by Dunlap. She's goes to the middle. That one's stripped. And it's gonna be Argus ball under their basket. Out of bounds by McGee. Stoltz comes into the game for Sophie Bollenbacher. So Vanderweel to inbound. We've got a timeout on the floor, got some blood. Dunlap got hit and right above her eye it looks like. So she'll be subbed out. 
Looks like Carly Miller. Carly Miller's gonna come in, yep, for Emma Dunlap. Find Shepard, three right off the first pass, the in, in and, and out. out. Man, we saw some free throws like that last night. Those are always frustrating, especially in a game that close. Looks like Stoltz is going to get the foul here. Yep, it's on Bella Stoltz. That is her first, and it is the team's third. Looks like the Dragons stick into that zone tonight, like they did last night. Three from Bo, and that one's no good. And it's going to go the other way. Looks like a loose ball foul. Markell, the push, and that is Culver's third for this half. Both teams have three fouls. Seems like they're both playing pretty aggressive right now on defense. Which is never a bad thing, but it's, nope. not, it's never necessarily a good thing either, especially if you get in early foul trouble bad enough. And... They called over and back, I do believe, but looks like one of them saying the ball got over tipped. And back was overturned. The ball was tipped the by Culver. The ball was tipped. So it's going to be Argus ball in midcourt. Yep, good call. See, this is why there's more than one official. So they, yep. Well, I'm pretty sure that's it, at least. Yep. Edmonds finds Miller. Mid-range jumper. That one's off. Off the back of the rim. Lob to Bowen. She'll go up, and there's a foul. It looks like it's going to be on Shepard. That's going to be her second in the team's fourth. Bowen's first is off the left side of the iron and out. Second one's up, and that one rattled around a bit and missed. That was a good high screen by Edmonds, but a turnover by Vanderweel. Gives Culver the ball. Kick across court. Good double team there, quick. And Shepard, looks like that's going to be her third already. That is yeah, third. that's already her third. Team's fifth. So Shepard's going to come out. Samantha Redinger's going to sub in for her. Bowen for three, off the mark. She was a couple feet Culver. outside the line. Yeah, that looked pretty deep from here. That was a good. So the academy, good still only one shot made. Falls on that the floor. One. And they're going to call a foul, a push. And it's going to be on Bella Stoltz, her second, team sixth. See, like we said about the early aggression, but now there's already six fouls in the first. Culver's had some tough offensive sets. They're going to try. They're really looking for a basket here, and there's a carry. There's travel, sorry. And there's going to be a substitution. Sophie Bullenbacher is going to come in for Isabella Stoltz. By the way, have we given a shout out to Drew Mawson yet? I don't think we have. Shout out to Drew Mawson down there. That's what? Five? Perfect. That is number five. We're on track. 30 more to go. <laughs> oh, and I don't know if you know, but me and... Me and Phil last night, we started keeping track of how many times someone had to tie their shoes. So be on the lookout for that as well. 
And we'll put that down on the score sheet. <laughs> oh, had Vanderwill on the cut, but couldn't find her in time. That one's going to be thrown away. Spiller gets the steal. Right That's now, each team with two turnovers. And that it looked like her feet were on the line, but it doesn't matter as it only hits glass. So Bollenbacher's going to take it herself the other way. Almost stolen. Quick pass to Redinger there. Edmonds gives it to Redinger on the top of the key. Baseline drive, Vanderweel. It's good, but there's a foul on foul the floor. That's her first. Team's fourth. And that one's going to be Craig's first. This cover defense coming out very aggressive. And they're it just seems that there's almost a lid on their basket. Redinger's last second shot is no good. It looks like they were looking for an earlier shot on that, but I don't think she knew how much time was on the clock, so she didn't put it up. But at the end of the first, we have the Argus Lady Dragons 7 and the Culver Academy Lady Eagles at 2. And both teams, I think, looking pretty solid defensively. Both having good shot contests. Dragons down here in that zone with good traps right away. Always, once that ball's passed, they're always going toward, swarming it. Just great defense on both sides so far. Yeah, when the ball gets down below the basket, there's at least two there to stop it. Sometimes even three, which has caused two turnovers so far for Argus. The Good. fact that you keep track of that. Did you write that down? It's all up there. It's all up here, my friend. Although Argus does have two turnovers. Uh, well, almost three on this down here. Almost stripped from her, picked, almost picked her pocket. Looks like Culver keeps the same set. Argus keeps... The same, looks like Dunlap's back in. And the starters, except for Redinger, are in for the Dragons right now. And there's going to be a reach Spiller. on Spiller. That's her first, team's fifth. At this rate, we should be in the bonus pretty quick here in the second quarter. Finds Dunlap on the cut. Bollenbacher fakes, goes the other way. That lane Here's closes Edmonds. up quick with it this Culver defense. It really does. And there's a shooting foul. Edmonds will go to the stripe for two. And that one's going to be on Deanna Craig. That's her second, team six. Edmonds' first shot is off the mark. Free throw shooting, not looking too great already tonight. I don't think neither has team there made a free, has either team made a free throw? These are Argus's first two free throws. Um, Culver missed their first two. I thought that, I thought there had been more, never mind. <laughs> and so setting up for Edmonds' second. This one off the back iron and out. A little too much on it. And here comes Bowen the other way. Culver's still looking to score. They've only scored those first two points in that first quarter. Kick out. Here's Markell. Gets nothing and there was a three in the key. Dragons will get the ball. So far, both teams scrapping. They are fighting. They're fighting for every the post. rebound. They're fighting at the post. 
and no one is giving, neither team is giving anyone Ooh. any inch. Almost had Bollenbacher on that lob, but just didn't, didn't hit her on the pass. And kick out Dunlap, she'll drive to the middle, give to Edmonds, that one's stolen. And here's McGee now. Almost traveled it looked like if she would have taken another half second. Tip by Dunlap, but gets to her. There's Bowen inside. Kicks back out to McGee. That shot, that one's good from mid-range. And that's the Academy's first basket of the second quarter. They cut into the lead. Lead is now only three for the Dragons. And there's gonna be a foul on the floor. I think they called it on the floor. Yep. That's, That's on third. Miller. That's her third. Team is now in the bonus. Gotta think that uh, they should get one, yep. one, and the bonus now. There's a sub. So we'll shoot uh, one and one. That is a seventh team foul for Culver. Yeah, you were right. We got there relatively quickly. Yeah. Within the first two minutes of this quarter, here we are. So Dunlap goes to the line. She's gonna go for one in the bonus. Already two players with three fouls, I believe, correct? It's Miller and for Culver and Shepard for Argus. Yep. And so the first one drops for Dunlap. Now the second one's underway. Some Culver fans clapping over here, trying to distract her, but it doesn't matter. Extends the lead to five. That one almost out of bounds. Edmonds really locking, locking up Bowen in the middle. Not really giving up much in there. Bowen from outside, that one's off the mark. Rebound, Bollenbacher. Pressure from the academy, but Vanderbilt's not even phased. Get the trap in the corner. Goes through, here's Redinger into Bollenbacher. Almost, almost blocked. Edmonds the shot, that one rolls out. Oh. And there's gonna be loose ball foul in the middle. And Argus will, er, sorry, Culver will have it. And that'll be on Lizzie Edmonds. That's her first and the team's seventh. The Eagles are now in the bonus. That free throw off. And now Edmonds will go the other way. Gives to, gives to Vanderweel. Finds Bollenbacher, that one off the mark. Can't convert. We saw a few of those last night as well. There were some great, fantastic cuts going, on that going right to that opposite block, but just couldn't convert inside. And those would have been baskets that would have won Argus the game, but just couldn't get him to fall. And now here's McGee on the right side. And that'll be a travel on Craig. And the foot came up. And there's gonna be a, a substitution. Number four, Leah Markle is gonna come in for Lena Spiller. And now here come the Dragons. Uh, that one saved by Vanderweel after that one went off her foot. Drive to the middle, that one's good. Yes. Maddie Vanderweel. Dragons now up seven, 11 to four. Finds Craig. And a double dribble, looks like both of her hands, both of her hands got on the ball. And 
And there's going to be a substitution now. It's going to be Sophie Bollenbacher coming out for Bella Stoltz as we're going to get a timeout from Culver Academy. Full timeout. That is already their second timeout of the game. They've used two fulls, so they got one full and two thirties left. And we still have a lot of time left in the second. Yeah. And all of the second half to go. So I never knew how the timeout system worked because I never really needed to. I never call timeouts or anything, you know. So is it? <laughs> <laughs> I just learned last night doing the book for a JV game. Three fulls, that two thirties. In the whole game or just a half? Whole game. Okay. I didn't know if it was like college where you get, what is it? Four and a half or something? Something like that. And then I know in the NBA it's six and throughout the entire game. And I think those are all minutes. Those are all minute timeout, full. Correct? Sure. We'll say yes to that. And so now the Dragons will have it, have it coming out of the timeout. And we want to give a quick shout out to Drew Mawson, Coach Drew Mawson, assistant coach of the Argus Dragons boys basketball team. As I don't think we've given him one yet, have we? I, I don't think we have. I think that's the first one. Uh, and that one that was, was tipped. tipped. And so yep. Vanderbilt will still have it. She thought it was. She thought it was over and back. Yeah. That there was and a And there's travel. a travel on that pass to the corner. She knew it. She's shaking her head. Yep. Fourth turnover for the Dragons tonight. Each team with four. And so here comes Craig. Culver only one basket in each quarter. They're they're looking to change something offensively. Here's Bowen. That one's tipped, and Bowen puts it in. Parents are over here asking for a foul. Which there there could have been. I I that's that one's a toss up. I personally didn't see if there was or not. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave it to the guys in the black and white stripes. And there's going to be a foul on number 24, Taylor Bowen. As that's the team's eighth and her first. Edmonds goes to the line. She missed her first two earlier. That one. That one's good. Does not touch the rim. Good shot. Second one's up. Academy fans still clapping, trying to distract the shooters. You know, that was my favorite thing about being in elementary school. You're just, because the refs didn't care in the elementary school game. So you could just be talking all you want to those free throw shooters when you're on the line. It was fantastic. A pass I, to the corner. I, I think we used to uh, have the kids at the top of the key. Uh, yeah, we would. Just go back I and forth. I got the shooter. No, I got the shooter. Yeah, it was just go back and forth between that. Inside, here's Arco Bowen. The and there's a foul on Edmonds. It looks like some people are saying that her hands were straight up, but I think they were curved a little bit over the top of Bowen. And so that's going to be her second, team's eighth. Bowen's first one. That one's good. Second one's up. That one's also good. Quick releases on those. Doesn't really use much of a routine to get through it, but doesn't really need to take her time to make them, I guess. Stoltz's cut. Doesn't hit it. Vanderwheel's hook. That one's good. It's 15 to 8 now. Dragons lead by 7. Here comes Craig. Inside to Bowen. They double... Double her inside. That one's off wide right. And over the back, it Get looks her like. For over the back. Yep. 24. That's her second team's ninth. Yeah. 
See, and that's a good strategy for any any big. Like, just get your matchup boxed out. Make her go. Make the other. Make her go over you. Yep. If you don't, if you don't jump, make her go over you because she's gonna want to fight for that ball. That one, you passing lane cut off. Vanderbilt still got it though. You can almost force them into that by just boxing out and staying low and getting them to go right over the top of you. Vanderbilt inside. That one's blocked. Blocked. blocked Good by block by Craig. Yep. The Eagles are going to slow things down as there's just under two minutes left here in, this, in the first half. In the corner, it's Marco. Looks to drive to the middle, and there's a hold. And they called a hold on Lizzie Edmonds in the paint, and that's her third. You never want to see that third, that three go up next to your number on the scoreboard in the first half. Trust me, I know. It's never fun. And Bollenbacher's going to come in for Edmonds. Right now, Argus with two players with three fouls. Shepard at Edmonds, correct? Yep. And Bowen gets the first one. It increases her free throw percentage for the night. She's now at 60%. Quick math with Joe. Bowen second. That one's off long. In rebound with Markle. Bowen gets it back again, puts it up and in. We said it earlier, she's a big presence down low, and she has shown tonight she's a physical player. And once Edmonds came out, you could tell. Um, she just drove straight in. and She went right from that free throw line right down to the block, got, got that rebound. Yep. So now here's Dunlap. The academy just cut into, their, into the Dragons' lead a little bit. And there's going to be there's going to be what I got made fun of for this. My first call, I said ticky tacky fouls, and that's what I think was one. I didn't see much contact there, so I'm going to say that one was a ticky tacky foul, yeah. which I'm going to hear about after this. I can guarantee it. And then I'll send Redinger to the line. The first one's good, as the Dragons are in double bonus, I believe. Yes. So Redinger's going to put up her second soon. That one is also good. You would be correct on the ticky-tacky foul. Um, I, I don't even think there was contact. It looked like uh, she just got around her clean. But yeah. apparently, uh, apparently Mr. Hatfield saw something we did not. They still got the two points out of it, though, so no harm done for Argus having to go to the line. There's Bowen inside against Vanderweel. And there's a char. Oh, she threw her elbow. Okay. Bowen threw her elbow. That's her third. And she will head to the bench. It looks like they're in the. Shouldn't they be free? Offensive foul. Offensive fouls. They don't work like I thought they did. All right. So now Bullenbach on the top of the key. 40 seconds left in the first half. Dragons are just trying to hold it until the last shot, I'm guessing. Stoltz received the unexpected pass right there. I don't think she was looking for that pass. And there's a charge. Maddie Vanderweel's the victim of that one. That'll be her first. And they won't be shooting free throws because that one's offensive. I got it now. And as halftime approaches, we would like to give a shout out to Coach Drew Mawson, assistant coach of the boys Argus basketball team. I believe that's our first one for him, correct? We were supposed to shout yeah. him out. Yeah. I don't think we've. Uh, we haven't done that yet. There's a yet. first one. That, that one's tipped, tipped and so goes out of bounds. Culver will keep possession under their basket with .3 seconds left on the clock. A lot of yelling going on between both coaches. Yeah. 
And that one's up. And that will end the first half. The Argus Lady Dragons lead by 6, 17 to 11, as they are in pursuit for their first win of this season. And so now, do you have all the stats kept up and everything? Oh, yeah, for all sure. Right. So we're going to get a scoring breakdown real quick for both teams like we normally do. I don't know if you're comfortable with that. It's all good. But we're going to do it. Right now for Culver, Markle with two, McGee with two, Bowen with seven. For Argus, Redinger with two, Shepard with three, Dunlap with two, Vanderweel with four, Edmonds with six. So we're good? Yeah. All right, so now for halftime, we're going to send you guys, we're going to send some ads and commercials your guys' way for your own enjoyment. And me and Mr. Kindig here, we will see you in the second half. All right, hello ladies and gentlemen. We are back here with the second half of the Argus Dragons hosting the Culver Academy Eagles. And the Dragons hold a six point lead right now, 17 to 11, as we get to the 32nd mark leading into the second half. And if we haven't yet, I'd like to give a shout out to Drew Mawson, assistant coach of the Argus boys basketball team. I don't think we've truly doing amazing things. Yeah, I don't I don't think we've uh, done that yet tonight. So. No, I don't believe we have. And so there's our shout out of the night for the what? Ninth, tenth time? No, that's the first. Oh, that's the first. Oh, okay. Never mind. And so it looks like the starters are gonna be on the floor for the Dragons and as well for the Eagles. Two players in foul trouble quick though, Shepard and Edmonds for the Dragons. Anyone in foul trouble on the other side, on the Eagles side? Bowen and Miller, each with three. All right, four players with three. And Craig will start with the ball. She'll pick up her dribble quick, kick it over to the other side to McGee. To McGee, sorry. There's Craig in the corner. There's a trap in the corner. Good trap. That one is stolen. And Edmonds goes the other way. McGee stops her, but the forward pass to Bullerbacher gets through. And the Dragons will set up their offense. Find Shepard in the corner for three. That one's off the mark short. Edmonds comes Edmonds away with the rebound. With the puts rebound it up off the glass, the no good. She was in the middle of three Culver defenders. Yeah. I told you, man, relentless on that offensive glass. Good rebound. Culver, Culver continues with their ball movement around the uh, arc. And there's mid-range jumper. That one's off the mark. Kept in, no it's not, it's out of bounds. Argus will get back possession. Here comes Dunlap the other way now as we're a full minute through the second, the uh, third quarter. And a little push off by the academy defender. Fouls on McGee, that's her second of the game. First of the half. Shepard looking around, waiting for the offense to progress. Inside Edmonds, shot fake, good. That little hook is good as well off the glass. Tack on another one for Edmonds. 
How many is that for her now? She now has eight. That was eight points. And a steal by Edmonds. Forward pass to Dunlap. Fast break, score, no good. Here's Bowen on the other side. She'll stop, Vanderweel set up for a smart uh, charge attempt there, but Bowen just kind of stopped in front of her. That is gonna be Miller's fourth foul. Indeed, her fourth and the team's second of the half, of the half, ugh, sorry. Love growing up, don't you? It's great. You haven't grown up yet. Well, obviously not. My voice is still cracking, so. <laughs> and that one kept in bounds. Dragons will keep the ball, though. Spolenbacher finds Dunlap on the baseline. Here's Shepard in the corner, kicks to Dunlap. Bollenbacher goes towards the middle. The floater is good off the glass. The Dragons now extend their lead to 10. It's 21 to 11. And that one, just a little bit of a miscommunication or just an arid pass, but that one's just a bit outside and goes out of bounds. Dragons will get the ball. Looks like Craig zigged when she should have zagged. It's those comments. It's those comments. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for Edmonds in the post. There's a, looks like she stuck her arm out when she was trying to drive. And that'll be on Vanderweel. That's, or that's on Edmonds. Dunlap. That's, no, that's, that's on Edmonds. That's her fourth. And so Stoltz will come in for her. Thought he said 20. I thought that was going to be on Vanderweel on that drive because she like kind of had her arm out a little bit. But I, but I guess. All right, then. So here's McGee on the right side. Bowen across to Craig. She'll drive to the middle. Look to the corner for Markel. Tries to step through the trap, but can't. And here's Bowen outside for three. That one's off the mark. Fighting inside is Craig. She'll keep it in bounds. McGee into Bowen. Vanderweel to contest. Bowen goes up again. And got the shot to fall to and the foul. That one's going to be on Vanderweel, her second, team second. Bowen's shot's good. Converts the old-fashioned three-point play. Culver is now on the board for the half. And kind of like we said before, Dylan, she's, she has remained aggressive. Vanderbilt inside got fouled. She'll go to the stripe for two. That one's going to be on Craig, her third. Vanderwill's first coming up. First one is good. And there's a substitution for the Eagles. Incoming number 23, Alexandra Orendin, Orendain for Mallory McGee. So Vanderwill's second is up, and that one's good. Dragons now with a nine point lead. Their biggest lead has been 10 tonight. Inside to Bowen, she'll go under the basket. Nothing there. Bowen thought about shooting that or feeding it inside. Bowen can't find a shot there either. Here's Craig for three. Craig's shot's good for three their first three of the night. A 
Oh, Staltz could have had that shot. Didn't look for it, though. Looked to pass first. And here's Dunlap's drive. It's Shepard outside. That one is good. good. That's good for three. And the lead is back to nine as the Dragons answer with their own three-pointer. And Bowen trying to get one right back. In, in and, and out. out. That one's put back up. No good. Vanderbilt fights inside for that rebound. And they're going to go. And the Dragons will get the ball. That is her fourth foul. There's a substitution now. It's going to be McGee in for Bowen. Shepard off the dribble. That one's off. Dunlap gets it back. Steps through. No good. Vanderbilt tips it up. Can't keep it, though. Markell gets it. Stolen gets anyway. Steal. Can't convert. Can't it to go. Vanderbilt still fighting in there. Steal. That one's blocked. Oh, there's a foul. And there's a foul on Spiller as Vanderbilt will go to the line. Great defensive efforts down there. Two straight steals to get shots up. One of them can't go, and the other one she got fouled on. And there's going to be a full timeout for the Culver Academy Eagles as they're going to look to regroup after this nine-point deficit. Great persistence by Vanderweel. Yes, very much. Two straight steals down low. Gets up two, two good shots. Yes, they were contested, but, like, you got to get those up before everyone else comes back. Yep. She's one of two seniors on the team. She she wants the W. Yes, very much. And she's searching for this first W for the Dragons. Which they are on pace to do. It's <laughs> This is fake wood. It's all plastic. <laughs> it don't matter. So far Argus still playing aggressive. Culver defense still aggressive. Both teams, both teams want that W tonight. Both sides showing signs of life defensively, definitely. But the Eagles still trying to find their rhythm offensively. Can't put up as many points as I think they're used to getting. As they've only had six this quarter so far. Only two in the first, though. And then, well, they got nine in the second. But I feel like a team like Culver is used to scoring much more than what they have so far. But that just proves how well Argus has played defensively. And that's really what's made the statement this game. And so Vanderweel trying to take the biggest lead of the night. That one's good. It's an 11 point lead, 28 to 17. The Dragons have the advantage. Craig the drive. And there's going to be a foul on the floor, I believe, they called. It's going to be on Sophie Bullenbacher. I missed what happened there. I didn't see a foul. I I didn't think there was, but I'm, I'm not going to argue because I technically can't hear. So <laughs> I was going to say. Mr. That one Hatfield, almost saved. Mr. Hatfield saw something we didn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> McGee, the good effort to try to save that one, but it's just out of bounds. You could say he's he's got a little better angle than we have. Stalts the drive. That one's no good. Is, is there a blocker? Is it a charge that they're going to call inside? And they're going to call a charge. I think she was set. I'm not sure though. I didn't quite see it as well as other people may have. And so they're going to call a charge. The dragon or the Eagles will have the ball. That one almost thrown out of bounds. Stolen by Shepard. 
tries to keep her dribble alive, but can't. Gets it to Vanderweel, and the fast break starts. Had Stoltz, couldn't get her in time, though. Kicks across to Bollenbacher. That shot's good. Right. Wide open. Wide open on that right block. And that'll extend that lead to 13. So far, Argus having a good quarter. So far, really converting when they need to. Indeed. Craig the drive, blocked by Vanderweel. Spiller's gonna miss though. Nothing but glass on that shot. And so here's Stoltz in the corner. She'll go towards the middle, give it to Dunlap. She'll drive in the middle, but she traveled before she got the ball down. Foot came up. So Culver will have the ball the other way as Craig takes it down the floor. And we have approximately one minute and 15 seconds left here in the third quarter. This one's straight to the top of the key for McGee. Kick to Craig in the wing. Back over to McGee, the baseline drive. That one's blocked by Vanderweel, another block for her. And here comes Stoltz. She'll do a little crossover move and trip. The ball goes the other way. They're having a little laugh about it under the basket. Getting up kind of gingerly. I mean, things like looks that. Like, looks like she's okay. Things like that happen, though, you know. And you can't really do anything but just laugh it off, honestly. Like, laugh it off and get ready for the next uh, next set. A Good effort. defensive effort by Emma Dunlap. Long pass to Shepard. That one's picked off but it's out of bounds Argus will have the ball in their baseline as Carly Miller is going to sub in for Bella Stoltz Dragons still hold a 13 point lead here with 40.8 left in the third here's Dunlap on the right wing feeds inside Vanderweel she'll drive kick out to Bullenbacher shot fake Here's Miller, deep three, off the short off the front iron. They're going to fight inside for it, and there's going to be a jump ball. Looks like it's going to stay with Argus. And the Dragons will keep possession. Once again, a very great, very good defensive effort there. These Dragons staying with the ball, staying on it. Sophie pops out, but that one's tipped. So Dragons will keep the it. ball, though. Here's Shepard. Looks like 16 left on the clock. They're going to try to hold it to get a shot. There's a foul inside. Like no, like was it? Leaned a little bit on Vanderweel. Was there a timeout? And there was, there a, timeout. was a timeout. I thought they called a foul there, but never mind. Argus calls their first timeout of the night. 30 seconds. So with 13 seconds left with a 13 point lead here in the third. Two shout outs. First one. First one. Drew Mawson. Drew Mawson. Haven't, assistant haven't, coach. Given him, haven't given him a shout out yet. Assistant coach for the Argus Boys Dragons basketball team. Second shout out. One of my favorite people. Mr. Brent Markley. Where's he at? Is he, is he still He's across here? the way. He's at right over there. He's yep. across the way. I was just making, because I saw him over there in that top left corner of the stands. And, oh, did he tell you to do that? Or did no, you just he just do it? I had my mask on. Had to pull it, pull it down so you at home could hear me. Apparently okay. he could not. All right. This one is tipped by Spiller. And she's going to get it, All put it way. up, and in. Coast to coast on the steal. And time taken down here in the third. And they're going to get the shot off in time, but that one was wide left. And just a bit just outside. Just a bit outside. <laughs> As the third quarter will end, and we're heading into the fourth. Dragons with an 11-point lead, 30-19. to 19. They've had a double-digit lead almost the whole third quarter. They exploded early and then 
not it, most of the scoring really happened in the middle of that quarter. And they needed it when they got it when they needed it. Yeah. Which Dra gives them this 11 point cushion. Dragons went perfect from the line in that quarter, as did Culver. So the free throw percentages climb. They will continue to rise. But as the game continues, we'll see who really can hit them when they need them if this game gets close or close enough to where it's it comes down to those. Um, and it's going to come down to free throws and who's in better shape, like I told Phil last night. Late in games, that's what kills you the most. Yeah. You, if it comes down to the end and you miss a free throw and it turns out a, 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 a loss for your team, it's, it's what you always take a look at what you missed before that. Yep. And so right now, Culver's missed four, Argus has missed two. And the Dragons will put Edmonds back in. She has four fouls. She's going to have to watch out inside. With still eight minutes left in this game, she's going to have to be careful. Bowen also in. I think she has three or four as well, doesn't she? Bowen has four. She has four. So both of the, both of the bigs tonight, they both have four. Both have made very big impacts on this game. Here's Craig inside. Kicks it to, here's Markell, top of the key. No good. And that one's on the floor. Craig ends up with it. Stolen by Shepard. Here she goes. Bowen's not even going to try. Shepard lays that one up easily. Lead back to 13 most of the night. Don't want to get that fifth foul. Very true, very true. Here's McGee on that left wing. Gives it to the corner. Markell back to McGee. Stolen by Shepard again. Two straight possessions, two straight steals for Sydney Shepard. Dunlap pull up three. Bang! That one's good. Sorry, my, my brain came out there. Sorry. <laughs> Ears are a little sore now. Thanks. My bad. <laughs> that was a 16-point lead now. That was a big shot. Argus needed that. Very big shot from the sophomore. Edmonds with the steal. She'll take it. Find Dunlap in the middle. She'll bring it across the timeline. You know, we talked about free throws, but right now Culver with eight turnovers in the second half. And Edmonds, that one no good. Gets it back. Puts it back up. No good again. Bowen comes back down with it. With those eight turnovers. Argus has been able to uh They've been able to capitalize on some of them, yeah. Yep. So that, too, could be Bowen a factor late in the game. Bowen outside. That one's no good. Edmonds pulls down the board. Here's Bullenbacher looking to feed the post. Can't find anything, though. Craig, the good effort. Shepard, the pull-up three. That one's no good. Almost. Edmonds, the hook. No good again. Bullenbacher fights inside for that offensive board, and there's going to be a jump ball. Dragons will have possession under their basket. Dunlap to drive. The little floater, that one's off the mark. Here comes Bowen the other way now. Down 16 here in the fourth with 5.33 left. In the corner, Markell back to McGee. And he's holding. Was the there a double foul going on? Looks like there was a double foul. Double foul, and that's five for each. So they will both foul Miller, out. Miller is subbed out, and it looks like Edmonds comes out too. Yeah, both of them. Five fouls. Yep. That's it for them. So again, the aggressiveness. Yeah, it, it showed tonight. They were both, both really playing well defensively and on those boards. Both fighting for position and... Unfortunately, they ended up over. unlucky, yeah. And here's Bowen outside. That one's good. Bowen outside for three, cuts into that lead. 
back to 13. 13 for her on the night. Here's Stultz. That one's no good. Board Bowen. Pull up three. That one's from deep. Missed short, though. Vanderbilt comes away with it. Markell hustling to get back, trying to take the charge. Vanderbilt, no good. Another board for Bowen. She just keeps getting the right position to get those. Here's Craig to drive, and it's blocked. That one's blocked by Vanderweel. I, it looked like Vanderweel, right? Yeah. yeah. That's another block for her. That's what, three or four? I There's been quite a bit of them. I know it's at least two. Showing very good interior defense. Here's Shepard. That one's off. Bowen again. I was, I was waiting for her to pull up from there again just to <laughs> Third time's the charm. Markell, the pass to Markell's picked off by Vanderwill. She's been playing very well on the defensive end tonight. Inside Stoltz. Stoltz's shot is good. 15 point lead for the Dragons. It's 37 to 22. As they're four minutes away from potentially re getting their first win of the season, which they're really hoping for tonight. With the opportunity they have with the amount of time there is left yeah, yeah. I, they could I, they could definitely yeah as long as they keep up the defensive intensity prevent Culver from chipping away at that lead they should be good as long as they don't let how tired they are get to them right because once once you start feeling it physically you feel it mentally and it takes you out of the game more than you think I'll agree with that statement and you know as of late They've had a couple steals, and they've run the ball up the floor. Um, they don't look real tired yet. They really don't. They're not showing they're, any signs of fatigue. They're running up and down the floor like it's the first quarter. So and They're still showing great defensive efforts on steals and rebounds. And after that timeout, I forgot to say it. We're going to give a shout-out to Drew Mawson, assistant coach of the Argus Dragons basketball team. And that one's good by oh, Bowen. Yes, she was looking for a foul there, but couldn't get called. She's got 15 on the night. Now Stoltz fighting for position. That one stolen by Markell. Good tip by Craig. Here comes Craig towards the middle. That one's tipped. Markell ends up with it, though. And there's going to be a foul on what looks like Samantha Redinger. That's the team sixth and her personal first. Maddie Vanderweel is going to come in now for Carly Miller. This one to Bowen. Thought she was thought gonna, about shooting that. Yeah. Thought she was going to pop that shot right there at the elbow. Which it, it was there for her. Was. The shots she's hit tonight, that was there for her. She's trying to get that skip. Cuts to the basket, wide open. No one gets her, though. And she'll take that one straight to the basket. And gets get the basket the and the foul. That's 17 for her now. And it's an 11 point lead. They're cutting in pretty efficiently. Letting her with her second. Team seventh now. That puts Culver, Culver into, into the, the bonus. bonus. So Bowen's foul shot is good. Culver looking confident after that basket, looking confident defensively. And this one to Stoltz, that one is good. Bella Stoltz inside. 12 point lead, 39-27 here with 2.50 left in the fourth. This one's Bowen, spot up three, bang. Wow. There's another one for her. What is that, 21? Unofficially 21, yes. So and now turnover. it's a nine-point lead and a turnover for the Dragons, and there's going to be a foul on them. So it's Culver Academy is going to get the ball back. As they're only down by nine now with 2.38 left. Shepard's fourth. And Shepard is almost fouled out. Is Dragons, Argus Dragons take a timeout, 30 seconds.
So that'll leave Culver with 130 seconds, Argus with three full timeouts left. Dragon's looking a little flustered now after giving up those few baskets. And without Lizzie's interior defense, this one could be, could end up coming down to the wire. Yeah. And Bowen with six quick points cutting into that lead. Yeah. Those, that extra foul shot helped. And then that three that she just hit. But what Argus needs to do. If they want to keep her, um, if they want to keep her out of it on the offensive end, they need to try to get a position on her on a box out, make her go over the back. She's got four fouls right now. Yep. Yeah, one more and one more, that'll and that's, be it. Yeah. Speaking of Bowen, she'll shoot the one and one. First one, no Off. good, and Shepard will end up with it. Dragon's ball. Looks like Culver's going to press. Culver is going to press, and there's a lot of fans down here not agreeing with that call. Oh, and easy Vanderbilt turnover. McGee, an easy McGee. basket. And now it's a seven-point lead for the Dragons. So they need to just slow things down. Well, they can't really slow things down, but they just need to survey the floor a little better and just look, look up. They're, that pass there just looked a little rushed if it looked forced. Yep. And the Dragons are going to go to the line for one of the bonus now. That one is going to be on Mallory McGee. That's her third, team seventh. Dragons could use both of these free throws going down as Sophie Bullenbacher comes in for Samantha Redinger. One on one. Dunlap, that one's good. See, and it's these times in basketball games where me and Phil were talking about last night. You probably heard it. We were talking about how the fourth quarter of basketball games after that, once it hits that three-minute mark, it turns into what seems like an entire 60-minute football game, plus the two-minute warning, plus all the commercials, and ends up being three or four hours, what seems like at least. The two-minute warning halftime show. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Argus that one's going tipped. with the double team. And, and stolen. Off. Slowing things down just to get some time off the clock. That is the 10th turnover this half for Culver Girls. This half? This half. They had four in the first half, and they've had 10 so far. And there's and a there's charge. The I don't. I, well played by the academy there. That'll be her third. And that one's on. Vanderweel, that's her third team's ninth. And is Culver going to shoot free throws on that, Dylan? They will not because it was an offensive foul. And Mr. Hatfield sets the ball down on the baseline because no one was there. Here's Bowen. That one's no good. I don't know if she looked for the bank there, but it hit the backboard. And the attempted steal by Dunlap. Here's a screen. Bowen's going to go in. She'll dribble it back out, though. Tip by Bollenbacher. That was just enough to throw off the Markle. momentum of that drive. Yeah. And there's a foul inside, and Craig will go to the line for two, as this one's going to be on Sophie Bollenbacher. That's her second, and that'll put the Academy in double bonus. <laughs> Craig will go to the line and shoot two. Craig's first is no good short. She's been scoreless since that three-pointer at the beginning of the half. Setting up for a second. It's up, and that one's nothing but net. Quick inbound to Dunlap. Culver continues the full court press. And there's a foul on what looks like McGee. And Dunlap will go to the line for one of the bonus. It's her fourth. So right now, Bowen, McGee, both with four, Craig with three.
Dunlap's first, that one's up, and it's good. Needed that one. So knowing that you have three people in foul trouble, do you try and push the ball, run the ball at them, try and get them to foul out? As Argus? Yes. I think you can, but I would. Uh, was that a carry over carry. there? There was a carry on Craig. I think, I think you should, but at the same time, you should be cautious because at the same time, Vanderweel has, what, three fouls? And if she tries mm -hmm. to draw a, a block trying to get a charge, they could set up for a charge just as easily and Stoltz. get it. Stoltz! Stoltz with the steal. That one's off the mark, though. Can't get, Can't get either one of them to go. And there's going to be a hold on Bullenbacher, I think. What a who's it going to be on? Good defensive efforts, though. Absolutely. Yep, that one's going to be on Bullenbacher and in the double right. bonus. That's her third, and the team's over 10. And McGee will go to the line for the first time tonight and shoot two. She's got four so far tonight. McGee's first shot, that one in, in and, and out. out. Once again, it comes down to these free throws late in games. Culver needs these ones to get him back into this one. Still with a minute 13 left. Almost too much time on the clock because we've seen it. Uh, we've seen it happen before. And they have only made one of their last five. So, yes, with the one free and throws only, are critical. With the one and only Reggie Miller in the playoffs in the 90s for the Pacers. That one's blocked by Stoltz, and there's a foul called. There's a foul top of the key. It looks like she's going to go to the line for three. Yep, that one's on Stoltz. It's going to be her fourth. She's also in foul trouble now. Yep. With a minute two left. So Craig. So Craig's going to go to the line for three. And it looks like Mr. Jennings is going to call a timeout. Yep, Dragon's timeout. He'll have to take a full. That's all he's got left. And that's fine. It gives him more time to Set up a defensive scheme and put something on the... And ice the kicker. <laughs> ice the kicker. Man, so we're going back to the football references, huh? Why not? And while we're in the timeout, I'd like to give a shout-out to co assistant coach Drew Moss. And <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me for that. I'm supposed to. <laughs> Yeah, assistant coach Drew Mawson under head coach Gordon Mawson. He must have heard us this time. I don't know if he heard us, did he? He's not looking up thought anymore. I, I thought so. I saw him turn around. I don't know if he's – I can't see his face under his mask. I don't know if he's trying to hide back laughter or if he's just staring blankly at the floor. I don't know. Or he can hear you and he's just not turning around. <laughs> We'll go with that. I hope he can hear us. I really do. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> and so as play gets set to resume, the Dragons have a nine-point lead, 42 to 33, here with a minute two left in the fourth quarter. Like I said before, though, the Dragons almost with too much time on the clock trying to hold this lead. It, it, the, a minute two, this will be the longest minute and two seconds in any part of the game, especially as the winning team in this situation. And so Craig will go to the line for three. First one's up, and that one's off left. The Eagles are three for eight free throws this half. Second one's up. Oh, that was the third, I guess. Never mind. <laughs> Whoops. Or was it just a two-point shot? Must have been two. Was there foot on the line? I thought it was a th Okay, it was a two. Luke Schaefer confirms at camera it was a two-point shot. I didn't see her foot on the line. I thought it was a three. That's my bad. And here's Dunlap trying to hold the ball as long as she can. That one's off Vanderbilt's head and loses it. That one's good. Right, and a ball. foul. Where? Was not it? sure where the foul was, but was okay. It, 
Who was it on? It was on Dunlap. It was on Emma Dunlap. That's her second. And Craig will go to the line for another one after she made the shot. That will take the lead down to seven. So that shot's good. Gets it into Dunlap. So She's trapped in the corner. And there's a foul in there. It's like 23 was moving her feet. Once again, some unhappy fans. And you know, both of these schools historically important to the state of Indiana, both with the first ever IHSAA soccer game in history. What year was that? 63. 63. I'm not sure if it was IHSAA. Might have been IHSAA. Well, still, whenever these two teams match up, it's always a big game in any sport they play. And so here's Dunlap coming with her second now. Second one's up and short. No good. Stalt's way to get her hands away. Make sure not to go over the back. She has four fouls. And here's Craig for three. Blocked. That one's tipped by Stalt. Gets it back. And it looked like she trampled there for a second. But uh, looks like an injury timeout of the official. Officials timeout. She did go so down for a second. Still yeah. kind of. Still kind of shaken up after that one. Yep. I don't know if she landed wrong or what happened or if it was on the shot, like her wrist or something. I don't, I don't know. She'll but now the in. Dragons will have the ball into Shepard. She'll give to Dunlap. Gets trapped. Kicks up to Bullenbacher. Oh, has Stoltz wide open. Doesn't hit her, though. And here's Bullenbacher. Good ball control there to keep it yep. with her. Yep, moving the ball. Almost well. tipped. 20 Let's seconds see. left. Now they're playing keep away. Dragons are just keep playing keep away. Academy's looking to foul. Bullenbacher, that one is and good. That and I think that easy. should seal it. Should be the icing With on the eight cake. seconds left. There's a nine point lead. And here's Craig from outside. That one's good though. A good shot. Great shot. Good shot. But it's not but too little, too late. The Argus girls get the first W of the season. First win of the season. Gotta love it. 45 to 39, Dragons come out on top. Should have unofficial results here in a moment. As we wait for our official stat guy, Joe Kendrick here to get done with that. I'd like to give a shout out to Coach Drew Mawson of the Boys Dragons basketball team. <laughs> oh, goodness. And I don't think he's heard a single one, which is a little disappointing. I'm not going to lie. I think you're right. It's a little disappointing. I hope he goes back and watches this, though, so he can hear him. He better. But yeah, the Dragons come out on top, 45-39. How many players fouled out? Two. It was just the two that two. fouled out, and then there was two or three others with four. Yeah, Miller and Edmonds both foul out. Shepard had four. Stultz had four. Bullenbacher with three. For Culver, McGee had four. Bowen had four. All right, and let's get to the scoring breakdown as soon as you're finished, at least. And I'd also like to give a shout out to Luke Schaefer here who did camera for us. Did a fantastic job keeping up with the game. I'm very proud of you. Good work, buddy. Good work. Unofficial stats for Culver Girls. Craig with 10, with three fouls. Markle with th one foul. McGee, four points, four fouls. Orenden with one foul. Bowen, four fouls with 21 points. She's going to take the top score for the night. Spiller with two fouls and two points. And Miller, who fouled out, had five fouls. For Argus, Redinger, two fouls, two points. Shepard, 11 points, four fouls. Stultz with four points and four fouls. Dunlap with six points, two fouls. 
Vanderweel with eight points and three fouls. Bollenbacher, six points, three fouls. And Edmonds with eight points and the five fouls. So, all right. We, we talked about aggressiveness. You could see it in the fouls. They showed it, yeah. Um, it's more than 10 fouls in that first half for each side and then more than 10 for the Dragons here in the second half. Only nine for the Culver Academy Eagles, though. But the Dragons come out on top, and I think that's going to do it from me and the Sir here from Phil Waybright Gymnasium. We say thank you for tuning in to tonight's broadcast.